schematics are a way. Did I spell that right? Yeah, I think so. Pictures of complex things. Okay, and so uh, when you draw a or when you have a circuit in front of you, there are lots of things in that circuit. So we're going to use a stylized way of drawing it. So it's simpler than looking at the picture. And so we need a bunch of symbols. for each of the components. And the first one I'm going to talk about is a battery. A battery. Plus side, minus side, divot on one end. And so if I draw that, it looks kind of like a tube, like that. It's got a little divot on one end, a plus side, and a minus side. Okay, pretty good, but if I want to draw that on a schematic, it's pretty interesting. I take a line, take a big line and a small line to represent the battery. This side is the positive side, and that side is the negative side. So this is one battery. Guys, how do you think I draw two batteries? Two of them, right. So a line, big one, small one, big one, small one, like this. And so this is the plus side, this is the minus side, this is the plus side, this is the minus side. Now it's not necessary that you uh, draw the pluses and the minuses, but it helps you kind of like visualize what's going on. So this is two batteries. And it's very common for uh, engineers to put information above it. So look at, there is, let's see, two batteries together, how many volts? Three, three volts, right? And so you tell people that three volts are moving through this battery. Real quick discussion about batteries, though. So if you take a look, with one battery, it's not e you can't mess it up. But if I have two batteries, why is it important that I have the batteries like this? Because actually, batteries are kind of like pumps. And so this battery pumps in that direction, and this battery pumps in that direction. If you goof it up and put it like this, one battery pumps that way, and the other battery pumps that way, and no electrons flow. Same deal there. Batteries are pumping against each other, and no electrons. Big batteries? Get yeah. batteries? Okay. Next, uh, let's do a switch. Okay. Darn it, Faye. So is this a very convenient way to open a circuit and close a circuit? And so, if I draw this. There's a handle all on a base. A wire going in and a wire coming out. Yeah? A switch? When we draw it schematically, this is how we do it. A wire going in. I like to put dots. wire going out. And then to denote that this middle part here can move, some engineers put arrows that go, hey, that's a closed switch, that's an open switch, so this is a closed switch. And this is an open switch. And once again, some people put these arrows. I think it makes it convenient. Hey, I can open this. So that is a switch. Okay. 
Next thing I'd like to teach you is a resistor. Now check this out. Resistors comes in all shapes and sizes. But this is the symbol. Goes in, jagged line, comes out. It is very common for you to tell people what the resistance of the resistor is. So for example, 3 ohms. Okay, and you can put it either on bottom or on top. Uh, 2.97 ohms. Okay, next is a special resistor. called a light bulb. Why is it so special? It lights up. You know what? It is a resistor. It restricts electrons from flowing, but it does something special. Anybody ever look at a light bulb really carefully? What's on the inside? Yeah, there's this really uber thin wire that's on the inside, surrounded by a glass globe. Now there's lots of styles of light bulbs, but this is the light bulb we're using. So let's see if I can draw that. There's these wires and a really thin one on the inside. There's a glass globe around it, and then there's a fitting, and then there's a bigger one around it, and then there's a wire. Okay. Well, if you want to draw the symbol, this is the symbol. A wire going in, curly crew, curly crew, curly Q, a circle around it to represent the glass, and a wire going out. Or, I've seen it like this. Either one of those are light bulbs. And then it's very common that you tell people, um, like, three milliohms, what the resistance of the light bulb is. Okay, you can put it on top or you can put it on bottom. Okay. The last uh, symbol that I'm going to teach you today, actually you're right, um, I goofed, not the last, a wire is exactly what you think it is. And the symbol for it is a line. It's not terribly complex. Okay, now really, now really the last component I'm going to talk about is a potentiometer, also known as a pot. What do you call these at home? Okay, a dial or a dimmer switch. Anybody have a dimmer switch in your house? Yeah, they come in a lot of shapes and sizes. Okay, it is a potentiometer, potentiometer, also known as a pot or a variable. These are all made for? You know what? Yeah, they're all synonyms. I've seen them called POTs, I've seen them called variable resistors. I've seen them called dimmer switches. What do you guys call it? A, oh, a dial. Yeah. And so let's see. We got the top of the dial, and we got a, and that has numbers one, two, three, four, five. And then uh, it sits on a base. Okay, what's cool is if you were to open these up on the back, you would see a curl of wire in a horseshoe shape. And then the dial touches that horseshoe in different places. That's how you get the resistance. So the symbol for these is you take the second half of a resistor like this, 
And then the first half, you put an arrow pointing to a part on the, the resistor. Basically, what that means is I could touch the resistor here, or I could touch the resistor here, or I could touch the resistor here. You can change the resistor.